debate. Senators square off. The debate will air tonight. Telling is the award-winning 11 News at noon. President Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney went head-to-head -head in a town hall debate last night. And as Remy Marsh shows us, it was often heated and contentious. President Obama pulled few punches last night, a stark contrast to his debate performance two weeks ago. When he said behind closed doors that 47% of the country considered themselves victims, whose personal responsibility the US stood in the Rose Garden, that we are going to that this was an act of terror. It took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. The state Senate and Hatch and they have on their minds while they're heading to the November election. Universal health care. Frankly, we as the state of Utah did better, but didn't need the federal government to tell us what to do right here in Utah. You know, health care is a big deal. But whether you, we, it's Governor Romney becomes president, we're going to have Romney care or we're going to have Obamacare because we need to solve this problem and we need to solve it immediately. On the internet as it happened this morning, but if you missed it, KBYU 11 will air the full broadcast in prime time tonight. Tune in at 9 p.m. to see the entire debate. An activist group says former state senator. The records committee hears records are not old one report due in July. Simonson says new staffers didn't realize they had missed important deadlines and that he's all caught up now. Have you ever gone to your car to drive it to work or school and instead find a boot or even worse, the car completely gone? Provo City Mayor John Curtis is trying to remedy what he calls predatory towing. 11 News reporter Christine Wallach shows us what city council members are doing about it. Predatory towing is when a towing company waits for someone to park illegally, even for one second, and slaps a boot on their car or tows them away before the driver even knows what's happening. BYU are all too familiar with this type of practice. I decided to leave my car and walk in for two or three minutes. I looked up from my phone to realize that a tow truck was backing up to my car. Emails to the mayor say that the most common story is that people leave their car for just a few minutes needs to take your car away. The majority on the phone about the complaints. Venting their frustration and and the stories become super excessive. And Solutions to the time to simply education about towing laws. The mayor is gathering stories of unfair spin in this situation. Those who say they are innocent and want to appeal have to pay the towing fees company before they even begin the process, mostly because they can't afford to pay the fee in the first place. I've seen that happen on sets to sell. Fish frenzy. If you're looking for fresh trout, Pleasant Grove is the place. Why the city is just giving the fish away. And waterworks. Have you ever thought what would happen if you ran out of water? How to save your waterways when we come back. Fish in a Pleasant Grove urban fishery all need to go in order to save the pond. 11 News reporter Eliza Bishop went to see why city officials need this, these fish out of water. Crews are draining Manila Creek Pond to fix some problems, and the Division of Wildlife Resources doesn't want the fish to go to waste. The equipment that adds air to the water here at Pleasant Grove's Manila Creek Park have broken, and fixing them means emptying all the water. We need to replace the aerators that are in the pond. Um, uh, do some moss removal. Uh, we're going to recondition the beach, clean the screens, a few things like that. The pond is full of trout, and the Division of Wildlife Services wants people to use the fish rather than losing them. Normally, people with fishing licenses are allowed to catch only two fish each. But considering the emergency situation, the division is making an exception and allowing people to catch up to eight fish from this pond only. Brought our boy over here, me and my wife, and we're just kind of seeing what we can do. So, looks like everybody else has the same idea. Giles says that come Friday, the water will be almost completely gone. Until then, he encourages everyone to take advantage of the opportunity. It's a great pond. It's a great place for the public, so we have people come from all over to enjoy it. The repairing should take around three weeks, and when finished, Manila Creek will slowly refill the pond, and the division will restock it with trout. ...to fix future problems using divers, so they won't have to drain the pond again. Jen? 
Economists are saying a proposed pipeline between Lake Powell and Washington County may be and cut out having enough clean water. 11 News reporter Andrew Clay tells us how we keep an adequate supply and what we can do to ensure it lasts. Thinking too much about your tap water, that means they're doing their job right. For water's a part of everyone's life, for drinking, for bathing, for everyday uses. People may be used to the power going off. It's 15 deep wells and nine boosted to cut back their desert state difference between water use in their hometowns and here in Provo. People just don't seem to notice the waste of water and I think a lot of it is in Vegas once a week. There's like I feel like here they water twice a day. Experts say that as we adjust our lifestyles to conserve sure a stable future supply. In Provo, Andrew Clay, 11 News. You can visiting Andrew's story at 11news.byu.edu and clicking on the EPA link. The deadly outbreak of meningitis is spreading. Crime Strong gives up his position at in America is its National Crime Victimization Survey in, for 2011, and it says violent crimes are up by 18%. Property crimes also jumped up to 11%, as well as theft, which rose 10%. These numbers are based on surveys by the Census Bureau of 70 investigators say most of the people got sick from a steroid injection, but the newest case of infections are from drugs used in heart and eye surgery. Officials say the contaminated medications may have exposed up to 14,000 people. So far, the Center for Disease Control has identified 214 cases and 15 deaths across the country. And Lance Armstrong is stepping down as chairman of his cancer foundation, Live Strong. Armstrong is accused of doping during his cycling career, but he denies the charge and any negativity in connection with, the, with doping. With a statement this partner with Armstrong. Armstrong is a cyclist around Utah. Well, the weather here in Utah for Utah will let you know and how it's going to be when we return right here on 11. Good afternoon. We have a clear, cool day today here in Provo. The skies, just a few clouds in the sky. It's a very beautiful day, but it is a lot cooler than from nice 70 degree weather to 52 currently. Our humidity is only 37% and we're seeing some little wind speed at eight miles per hour. We take a look at what we're gonna see throughout the day. It's still gonna remain sunny, but uh, we're gonna get some more winds coming in to nine to 15 miles per hour, and then it'll slow down a little bit towards the evening to about five, seven miles per hour. So we've got a very cool, little bit breezy day ahead of us. Taking a closer look at what we're going to see tonight is we will have sunset come in at 6.44 p.m. Skies will be clear, so you'll be able to see it, but there won't be that beautiful, those beautiful colors from all of the clouds. Um, the skies will remain 34 degrees as our low, so pretty cool temperatures for tonight. Our highs across the state are not very high compared to what we've seen in the last couple weeks, 58 in Logan for the, the highest point, Provo. And when you see that 75 in St. George, I don't know about you guys, it, we're getting into this fall weather. I mean, 67 in Moab and cold throughout the state. Uh, for our southern Utah forecast, we've got 70s today and tomorrow. So we're gonna see the cooler weather for today and tomorrow. And then it will kind of warm up throughout the rest of the week, 80s and then um, 72 on Sunday. Here for northern Utah, if we take a look at what we're going to see, it's going to have the same pattern. We're going to have a little bit cooler weather today and tomorrow. We had this cold front kind of sweep through the state and then exit. So it left these cooler temperatures for today and tomorrow. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it'll kind of just get a little bit warmer. Sunday, look at that. Take a look at, we will see some thunderstorms there perhaps. We've got a chance of those um, coming in on Sunday. So it would be a good time to take those umbrellas out. If you're going to church on Sunday, yeah, maybe sure. wear some nice weather kicking in, makes me excited for the holidays. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's hot chocolate season for yeah. sure. All right. Thanks, Angela. Yeah. So Ben, I hear there's some drama with the World Cup. Yeah, how's the U.S. doing? That's right, there are many U.S. taking on Guatemala. Coming up next on sports, a loss to Guatemala would eliminate the U.S. from World Cup qualification final if Team USA will be moving on to the next round. And Road Warriors learn what it takes for BYU football to visit your favorite venue. Sports is next. Stay tuned. It will take a lot to get the BOU football team ready for Saturday's game at Notre Dame. And it's not just game planning. 11 Sports reporter Clark Gerber tells us what it takes to get an entire football team across the country. 
After a couple of heartbreakers this season, the Cougars will try to exorcise their road demons against Notre Dame. But going on their own is a challenge behind the scenes as well. South Bend, Indiana is a mecca for college football fans, partly because it's so far away. BYU will travel 1,500 miles to face Heisman candidate Manti Teo and the fifth-ranked Fighting Irish, but they're not driving to South Bend. The team takes a private jet to most of their away games. It's fun. Good care of us. The Cougars don't have to worry about packing their own. If you think planning a family road trip is tough, and 17 brothers. It's about 18,000 pounds, and we'll move it, you know, here if we're playing at home, or we move it if we're playing across the country. While players still have plenty to worry about when they hit the road, NCAA rules say that all athletes must maintain at least a 2.3 GPA to play, and an away game sometimes means the players miss classes. That's probably definitely the hardest thing. That doesn't really apply to me this semester because I'm taking one credit, uh, so I did it the right way. Players say off-the-field preparation is just as important as the on-field variety. They will need both to upset the Irish. Saturday marks the first meeting between Notre Dame and BYU since 2005, a 49-23 win for the Irish. The Cougars have yet to win a game away from home this season. Ben? Thank you, Clark. Hopefully the luck can be with the Cougars instead of the Irish this time. The New York Yankees' struggling offense was not happy to see ace Justin Verlander in Detroit as he looked to continue his scoreless inning streak. A home run from Delmi Young in the fourth would give the Cy Young winner a secure lead as Verlander pitched eight scoreless innings with three strikeouts. In the ninth inning, though, it was Raul Obanez again who had a chance to be the hero for the Yankees, but instead ended up as the final out with the, the Tigers won 2-1 and took a 3-0 lead in the ALCS. The World Cup may not be till 2014, but the U.S. men's national soccer team faced the possibility of elimination against Guatemala Tuesday. The U.S. went behind early after Guatemala's Carlos Ruiz caught Tim Howard out of position, but off the corner kick, Carlos Bocanegra scored the equalizer, and Clint D Dempsey took charge in the absence of Landon Donovan finding the net twice and advancing to the U.S. to the final round of qualifying with a 3-1 victory over Los Chapines. When the NFL determines who gets to put a ring on at the Super Bowl on, on Sunday, halftime entertainment won't be from another 70s rock, 70s rock band, but the stylings of singer and dancer Beyonce. Usually they get to have a guest with them and it's maybe it'd be her husband Jay-Z or possibly Ooh. a Destiny's Child reunion. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't mind seeing some Destiny's Child oh, I there. I love them. And also those outfits are just going to be magnificent, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Night. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Still to come on 11 News at Noon. Mallard Mouth, what this new New York boy has him speaking duck. Why we may fit in with a new flock when we return. Some kids are really good at making animal sounds. We've all seen a child moo like a cow or cluck like a chicken, but this boy doesn't need to pretend. That noise is coming from seven-year-old Hector Flores Jr. His family thought he was playing a trick, but he actually swallowed a whistle from his toy duck. But don't worry, he's not going south for the winter. Doctors removed the whistle and Hector is back to speaking like a human. That's kind of funny. I wonder if uh, that hurt him at all. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm I'm glad that he could breathe. Definitely. That's 11 News at noon for Wednesday, October 17th. You can join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon.